my name is Scarlett Graham and I work for the Whatcom Conservation District and my job is to help farmers make conservation choices that make the most sense for their farm. One of the ways that we help farmers make those decisions is by collecting data on the effectiveness of best management practices. For the study I'm going to be telling you about today, we evaluated different solid manure storage options and how they affect water quality. Our study was conducted in western Washington under the shadow of Mount Rainier, which is in this photo, although the mountain was rarely present during the rainy season when we were conducting this study. Um, I also just wanted to add that I'm sorry I couldn't be with you today, but I'm really happy that we have the technology to still uh, let this presentation happen. So the goal for our project was to compare the impacts of different manure storage options on water quality outcomes. The storage options that we evaluated included covered manure storage as well as uncovered manure storage. And we also looked at manure stored on concrete slabs versus manure stored on compacted dirt. We conducted our study at two farms located in the South Puget Sound region in the town of Enumclaw that is situated just south and east of the city of Seattle and in the foothills of Mount Rainier National Park. All the water that drains from this region ends up into South Puget Sound where water quality is one of our main resources of concern. In Northwest Washington, we have a very distinct rainy season that goes from October until March or April, followed by an intermediary season of May and June, and then a very distinct dry season during the months of July, August, and September. During the rainy season from October through April, we get over four inches of rain each month and farmers are often keeping their manure in storage during this time and then will spread the manure on their fields in the summer months of May through September. And one of the main ways that we work with smaller farms in our region is in the summertime, especially into September, is we try to get everyone thinking about like, where are you going to store your manure once it starts to rain? Because everything is dry and it, it all looks very different in the summer. But it's important to have people think ahead for different um, storage options on their property. And so that was one of the big value of this project is to actually test out these different options on actual farms and collect some data about these different options. This slide gives you some visuals of the manure storage options or treatments that we were evaluating in our study. On the left, you'll see our concrete slabs with walls that form these nice bins. And we installed these at both sites. The one side had a roof and gutter, and that was our slab covered treatment, while the other side was the slab uncovered treatment. Then for our manure just stored on the ground, we compacted the dirt under two areas and then placed manure on the compacted dirt area. And on the one pile, we covered it with a tarp. And on the other pile, we just left it uncovered and exposed to the elements. For our study, we were trying to collect data on two potential water pollution pathways that might occur when manure is stored on a farm. And the first pathway is through surface runoff, and the second pathway is through leaching of nutrients into the soil and to the groundwater, which also eventually connects to surface waters. So the way that we monitored for these two pathways is first for the surface runoff was by designing our bins so that we had intakes in the back of them that would capture the stormwater runoff. So whenever rain fell onto these manure piles, 
um, the concrete slabs were gently sloped to the back of the bin where there was two uh, six inch pipes, which came together and we were able to monitor flow out of these pipes as well as collect samples out of them. To collect data on the potential for leaching into the soil and groundwater, we use soil sampling. And on a monthly basis, soil samples were collected from the 0 to 12 inch depth as well as the 24 inch depth and sent to the lab for analysis. In order to collect these samples, we had to physically go out and move some of the manure away and expose the compacted dirt surface, collect the sample cores, and then backfill those sample locations with bentonite, which is the white material that you see in the second photo. This sampling process was a bit laborious, and I think for future studies, we, we may not conduct it this way, but this was our, our attempt to get at um, leaching from the manure piles into the soil. In summary, our data collection consisted of collecting samples from manure, water quality of runoff, and the soil. We collected these samples from two sites and four treatments including slabs that were covered and uncovered and compacted dirt pads that were also covered and uncovered. The analytes that we focused on were total phosphorus, total nitrogen, and nitrate. We also collected rainfall data and flow monitoring data. Then this data was collected from October until May of 2021. Now I'm going to show you the results of our data collection. So the first thing that we look at is what was the composition of the manure piles. And on this slide, I have site A on the left and site H on the right. And you can see the total phosphorus in the manure was greater at site A. This was likely due to the fact that site A just had more animals in general. Their livestock primarily was composed of alpacas and sheep, as well as some chickens and waterfowl. This farm probably had more animals than their land could support, and they needed to add new manure to the piles much more frequently than site H. Site H only had horses, and I think they, they, they had much fewer than, than site A. So next we're going to look at the water samples that were collected from the two slab treatments. Total phosphorus in the runoff and leachate was higher from site A, which is what we'd expect based on our manure results. And the other consistent result that we also noted from both sites is that there was higher concentrations from the uncovered slab pretty consistently compared to the covered slab throughout the monitoring season. And so the other caveat that I want to give to you this data is that this is only looking at the concentration in the water quality and we intended to collect flow data to calculate the, the nutrient loading value which is arguably a better way to compare the, and quantify the effects of these different manure storage options. However, we were unable to quantify flow data from the covered slabs. The flow was there, but it was just too slow. And on this next, I just discussed some of the issues that we encountered trying to measure the leachate flow from the covered treatment. And so pretty much both manure piles were constantly leaching liquid. This is the, the brown color liquid that was coming off the covered pile. However, there weren't any rainfall driven runoff events that were occurring on this covered side because there, you know, there just wasn't rain on the manure. And so on the the 
uncovered side, we could see effects of the rain. We would see increases in flow whenever it rained. But the covered side, the flow was just too low, and, and we, we never saw any of these effects. And we tried to measure this flow with a V-notch weir and a pressure transducer. You can kind of see my my pressure transducer in here and my V-notch weir off to the side. And the V-notch weir would, would like hold water back in these pipes, and this is where I finally just like pulled it out and let it flow um, to see what was going on. But ultimately it was just like unmeasurably low. So this is something that we are hoping to improve on in future studies, is actually trying to quantify how much leachate is coming off these manure piles. We think it would give us a better um, idea of, of, of water quality effects. Okay, so moving on to the soil results, the total phosphorus in soil was higher at site A, which is similar to what we saw in the water quality and manure results. Um, but in general, our soil results were hard to interpret and hard to really tell if leaching, if there's a difference in leaching in between the treatments or the, the two sites. Because on one hand, you could look at site A and say that the concentrations were higher, so therefore more leaching was occurring. On the other hand, you could interpret that because these TP concentrations um, on the covered pile aren't really changing very much, that the, TP, the total phosphorus wasn't leaching through the soil pile profile and it was actually staying fairly stable. We didn't have baseline data for total phosphorus. These results were, were just unfortunately lost. So a take home from this for us is to improve upon quantifying leachate from manure piles, and we're going to do that using lysimeter in a, a follow-up study to this. So next, moving on to nitrogen, you'll see that the total uh, nitrogen was higher at site H compared to site A. Looking at the total nitrogen in the water quality from the runoff and leachate, we see that the total nitrogen was higher at site A compared to site H. This result was confounding because the total nitrogen was higher in manure at site H, as we just showed in the last slide. Our explanation for this was that the manure piles at site A were just overall larger than at site H, and this resulted in a higher concentrated runoff. In next year's study, we will restrict the amount of manure that the producer can add to the piles. We didn't do that this year because we wanted the producer to use these systems as normal, but I think that we really learned that management is a pretty big deal and that that's something that we should be managing for our study as well as communicating to producers about how to manage their manure piles for the best composting product. So then we go on to total nitrogen in the soil. The, the total nitrogen tended to be higher in the soils at site A and they also tend to be higher than the baseline samples indicating leaching occurring from the piles at site A. At site H, we really didn't see a difference in between the baseline and subsequent results. So again, these soil results were rather hard to interpret. The final nutrient uh, component to talk about is nitrate plus nitrite. This was much higher at site H compared to site A and this was due to the manure at site H, just having more time to age and convert into nitrate. As I mentioned earlier, site A just had a lot more manure and was continually being added to, whereas site A was actually able to convert and be left to compost. And so this kind of explains these inherent differences in the nitrate pile and also links back to 
um, your manure composition being affected by how you manage it. When we looked at the water quality results, we saw a similar thing to other constituents where we saw higher nitrate plus nitrite at the H site, which also had the higher nitrate plus nitrite in the, in the, in the actual manure composition. Another consistent result that we saw is higher nitrate coming off the uncovered slab. And this is also consistent with our total phosphorus and total nitrogen results. And then finally looking at the soil sample results, we see higher nitrate at, in, at site A. And this is possibly due to higher baseline values. As you can see, our October 2020 samples just tended to be the highest. Um, so again, these soil results are rather confounding and I don't think I'd recommend these as a way to to quantify leaching from a manure pile. The key takeaways of this study are that the covered manure stored in a concrete slab had lower concentrations of nutrients in the leachate and runoff. We also know that the covered manure had much lower flow volumes, although as I mentioned earlier, we're unable to quantify those this year. The uncovered manure in the slab, on the other hand, produced measurable runoff during rain events and also had higher concentrations of nutrients. We also saw evidence of leaching into the soil profile from the manure stirred, stored on compacted dirt areas, but ultimately we need to collect some more data to quantify this pathway. Finally, manure pile management makes a difference in your manure composition and it also makes a difference in the water quality results that you see. So that is the, the end of the presentation I have for you today. Um, on this slide, I've just acknowledged some of the big partners in this study. The conservation district was, my conservation district, the Whatcom Conservation District was involved in the research design and analysis. However, we had a lot of project oversight as well as farm planning that was conducted by both the American Farmland Trust as well as the King Conservation District. Thank you and let me know if you have any questions.